Hey guys, it's Pastor Sam, and today we're doing a science experiment that is so easy and you need so few things that I really hope you try it at home because it teaches us so much about nature and about God. So let's go ahead and get started. All you'll need for this experiment is hot water, cold water, four glass bottles, two different kinds of food coloring, and a card that is waxed on both sides, like a playing card or anything else that you can find. The first thing that you're gonna do is take your blue food coloring or whatever color you use and put a few drops in just two of the bottles. And then you'll do the same thing with the yellow food coloring. After you've done that, then take your hot water and fill up both of the glass jars that have the blue food coloring, and then fill up the two glass jars that have the yellow food coloring with cold water. So once you have that done, what we're gonna try to do and see what happens, because it is an experiment after all, is take this bottle of hot blue water, turn it upside down, and put it on top of this bottle of cold yellow water, and then see what happens to these two mixtures of hot and cold water. Are you ready? Let's try it out. All right, so that was a little scary, and I didn't know if it was all going to come out of the bottles, but here we see that instead of the blue and the yellow completely mixing together to make green, we see that the hot water is actually staying on top of the yellow cold water, and they're staying in two separate solutions. Now the question is, what happens if we put the yellow cold water on top of the blue? Let's go ahead and try that out, and let's see what will happen. All right, so if you're ready, get that courage together and let's see if we can flip this bottle of cold yellow water on top of the blue water and see what happens. All right. So if you can see what's happening here, if you look really, really closely and compare this to the next bottle, instead of the yellow staying on top of the blue, it looks like the yellow is starting to move down into the bottom and the blue is starting to rise to the top. So what we're getting all throughout is instead of a separate blue and yellow mixture, we're getting a completely green mixture because we know that when blue and yellow combine, it makes green. And if you look really, really closely, you can actually see the two different colors moving. You see the yellow moving down and the blue moving up. And there's actually a name for that. That movement of hot to cold and cold to hot is called a convection current, which is basically just a fancy way of saying that's heat moving. And this is something that happens all over the place. It's happening here right in front of us, but it also happens in water and it happens in our atmosphere. In fact, let me show you one place where this happens every day. I'm so glad that traveling is such a snap because I did not feel like driving today. But I did want to show you one place where convection currents happen all the time. Just like we saw in the water where the blue and the green mix together, that happens with the air too. The hot air tends to rise and the cold air tends to come down in a cycle. But one time that that tends not to happen is in the winter months. What happens is instead is something called temperature inversion. So that warm air will rise to the surface but then the cold air gets trapped under the warm air and that cold air gets trapped with all kinds of things that we also know as smog. So all of that dirty air gets trapped under the warm air in a temperature inversion instead of a convection current which brings the warm air to the top and the cold air to the bottom. So one reason why I love learning about convection currents is because they remind me a lot about prayer. Just like in this convection current where the blue and the yellow mix together, one comes up, one comes down, we always have the opportunity to come to God in prayer. In fact, Philippians 4 verse 6 says this, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. 
What this tells us is that we can lift anything to God. We can lift the things we're worried about, the things we're happy about. We can lift to God our praises and our gratitude. And in exchange, God gives us His peace, which guards our heart always. And that is such a great cycle that we can always give to God and He will give to us. In fact, one thing that we see in the atmosphere is that when convection currents happen, sometimes they're so powerful that thunderstorms happen. And just like that with prayer, when we pray, we release God's power into our lives and God can really move in our lives when we lift things up in prayer. But sometimes when we don't pray, it's kind of like temperature inversion. God's power is here and He wants to release it to us, but sometimes we hold that all inside instead. And our hearts get fogged up and they get clogged up like smog. So what we want to remember is just like a convection current, we can always lift our prayers to God and He promises to give us His peace. We want to do that instead of keeping all of that yucky stuff to ourselves and letting God's power stay there with Him instead of releasing that into our lives. I hope you try this experiment at home. It's a little scary to turn those bottles on top of each other, but it's a lot of fun and reminds us so much about how we are welcome to come to God in prayer. If you do try it, go ahead and send me some pictures so I can include them in the video next week. And if you wanna see all the past videos and more content, go ahead and subscribe to Azure Hills Kids Online on YouTube.